Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. Today's video, we're going to install this beautiful pumpkin Android stereo into my buddy's Aubrey's truck. I think it's around a 2010 F-150. Now, of course, for this installation, in order to make it happen, it's best to buy the installation kit. And the installation kit that I bought came complete with the new faceplate, a wiring harness, comes with your adapter for the radio, Comes with these connectors right here, but I'm not a fan of these connectors, so I'm going to solder and heat shrink. The first thing we need to do is get the wiring harness from the factory stereo and the wiring harness to the plug and get those connected. In the solder to the wires, I'm going to use my trusty gun. This is the TS100 soldering iron. It is the best thing since sliced bread. I've used this, you guys seen it. It's cheap. Only thing you need to buy with it is a power supply. You can tell it's like heating up so fast. And one thing you want to do is you want to verify your wiring output on here versus the wiring output on here. Because you don't want to mix up some wires. There has been some instances where wires have been a different color and may cause some grief. One thing before we start soldering the wires, make sure if you're going this route, make sure you have all your heat shrink tubing on first. Otherwise, you're going to have to cut the wire and redo it all over again. That's a pro tip. Here you have it, the harness is built and ready for installation. So in order to get the face plate out of this F-150, we need to pull the two side covers off. And there's also a couple bolts in there. Because you can see on the face plate, there's tabs on the side, which is gonna prevent us from pulling them out. So if you want to pull that right out, you'd have to remove the airbag, but we're just going to pull it out enough so that this face plate can come out. Yeah, this one, yeah, it just popped out. The main face plate is removed by two screws up top and one down below that we're going to find out where it is in just a second. Because it threw us for a loop. One more hidden one that stopped oh, us from it pulling is. it out. Got her. Got her. Now what we need to do is disconnect all the electrical connections from the back. Because we got to transfer everything over to the new faceplate. So just pay attention how everything goes. You're going to need to save all the screws and disconnect everything. So what we've done is we've transferred everything over to the new faceplate. That top piece just kind of pushes out and slides in. There's four torques for the HVAC. The cigarette lighter, our accessory port, a couple tabs, and these ones here are a real pain in the butt. I find to get these tabs and swap them over is to get a pick and then get underneath and then keep rocking it back and forth. And then when you push these back on, I use the um, hard end of my screwdriver and push down straight on. So they're kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt. Now we just need to remove the old CD 
four screws. That should just pull out. Yes, sir, it does. With a plug. So now we're ready to start the install. The only plug for the stereo that we're going to use is this one here. Aubrey's factory deck had satellite radio. This plug is not utilized in our install. This one should be the GPS antenna. This is just your radio. So we're only going to deal with these two right here. Kit came with the radio adapter. And then this is the harness that I created. So now we just got to bolt up the deck. Just inside the garage, one of the snags we had is that the install bracket didn't line up properly with the holes, so just minor had to drill a new hole, put an extra screw in, so you got two locking her down. But the faceplate, however, you see right there, the faceplate is, you need to widen it and make it taller as well. I'm hoping that since we're not going to get this opening perfect, that there'll be enough room with the stereo. And I'll be able to slide this over top and cover up any imperfections there. Right now, got the Wi-Fi plugged in, the GPS, antenna, power and speakers. Now we're going to bolt it up and then see how much more we got to modify the faceplate. The pumpkin stereo looks pretty nice there. Once he's done tightening the screws, we're just going to do a power check, make sure everything's working. The heck over. Should have been powering on, but we don't got nothing. So, so we got the stereo to boot up. There's one complication with the wiring harness. The ignition on which went into this main plug here. Um, actually, there was an ignition on wire there. I had to tap into this one right here. Now we got power to the stereo, so now we're gonna hook up everything and make sure everything still works. So right now we just got the pumpkin stereo installed. Well, not installed, but we got power to it and we verified that the speakers in that work. So now we're gonna start buttoning everything up and then getting that face plate to fit a little bit better. A problem, like I said, was with this ignition on wire right there. So once you plug everything back in, that is how the stereo is gonna look. Nice upgrade from the factory, a lot more options. We got some GPS, you got Bluetooth, connect your phone, you can surf the internet. I just got the radio playing right now, but uh, I'm gonna give you more in depth of the stereo in the next video. But this is just more of the install video. Like I said, the only issue we had is that with the um, connection or the connector that came for the stereo kit didn't have the ignition wire. We had to reroute that to a different situation and we got that figured out. So now everything works. Hope you guys enjoyed the video of installing in a 2010 F-150. Yes, sir. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. And hopefully your installation will go better than ours. We have to modify the dash to make the stereo fit and it still doesn't quite fit perfectly but we got it in so we'll see you guys in the next video